Welcome to Jersey's Flying and just a few hours ago the brand new open core Legacy Patcher 1.5.0 has been released. But the question is, do you need it? So just a few hours ago the developers of the open core Legacy Patcher just released version 1.5.0 of the open core Legacy Patcher. But wait! macOS 14.5 that should correlate to the open core legacy patcher version 1.5 was just released two weeks ago and in my video here i checked macOS 14.5 with the previous version of open core legacy patcher 1.4.3 and it worked flawlessly so what's the reason for version 1.5.0 right now and let's just dive a little bit into the change log and into the patch notes to answer the question should you update your unsupported Mac to version 1.5? Should you not update? Or maybe does the new version help you when you ran into some trouble updating your unsupported Mac? Let's go. So here is the GitHub repository of the Open Core Legacy Patcher. And you find all the links also down in the video description. By the way, if you haven't yet, I would recommend you subscribe my channel and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any updates. And if there are any more questions or very specific questions with your unsupported Mac, with specific software on your unsupported Mac, go down to the video description or to the first uh, comment, you find the link of my Discord server. And my Discord server just reached 2000 members and it's such a great community. They are all helping each other make their old unsupported Macs still up and running with the latest macOS. Thank you so much for that. So join the Discord community and they will take care of your questions. But here in the GitHub repository, you find the patch notes and the change log of the latest version 1.5.0 of the Open Core Legacy patcher. And the first thing they mention here is a new privileged helper tool. So what the heck is a new privileged helper tool? So the main parts of the new version of the Open Core Legacy Patcher are changes behind the curtain in the systematic of that patcher that you won't even notice. But there's one or two things you will notice and one of them will be the new privileged helper tool. It's a tool that just has administrator privileges on your Mac and so you don't have to enter your password for every kind of action. Whenever there are administrator privileges required like installing OpenCore to the EFI partition, applying root patches and so on, you had to enter your password in the process of patching your unsupported Mac and you won't need that anymore with that new privileged helper tool anymore. So that's a very nice uh, quality of life update they just incorporated into the new version but that doesn't change anything patch wise or open core wise. Next thing they have is a new package based distribution. Okay, another complicated term. What does that mean? Basically, when you scroll down here, let me just scroll past the change log to the assets you see here. And before version 1.5.0, we had that open core patcher GUI, which means graphic user interface, dot app dot zip that you downloaded, you extracted the zip file because it's a compressed file to save some space and then you had an app that you started and then you had the open core legacy patcher main menu. Right now it's a package and a package is kind of like an installer as if you downloaded any other software for Mac. Okay. So right now, I just downloaded that already. You see that you have an install window that will now install the OpenCore Legacy Patcher to your Mac. 
So when I go to the launch pad, you can see that the Open Core Legacy Patcher now is installed here on my Mac. And when I click it, then it will confirm the software and there is Open Core Legacy Patcher 1.5. So what's different now to the old procedure? Okay, you have an installer, fine. Before that, I just had an app that I opened. And let me just show you the difference, okay? We just go back to the version before, the previous version, 1.4.3. And let's open the assets and I have the Open Core Patcher GUI app zip. So I download that zip. That was the procedure before the new version, okay? Let me just go to downloads and there you see that's the download. That's a zip file. I do a double click on the zip file and it extracts the open core patcher. But now the app, the patcher itself is in the downloads folder. Okay. If I open that up, it just confirms the software verifying. Yes. I want to open it. And so, I have the same window here. But what's the difference now? The difference is, and that is also written here on the home page, let me just go up here, that it's installed to your system and some of you had the problem that even though they installed the latest version of the Open Core Legacy Patcher, there's still after reboot a message popping up, there's a new version. So there was a version mismatch because it could happen that the Open Core Legacy Patcher was installed in a wrong or a different directory. So there were two versions on your old Mac and the one that was loaded was still the old version. It was not deleted and it was not finding the newer version. So that should be gone by now because it's now installed as a regular app into applications. Second thing, and that is when we go down here, we now have an open core patcher uninstaller package. And we go into the finder and then we have an open core patcher uninstaller package. So let's start this. Welcome to the open core legacy patcher uninstaller. Let's continue install it asks for my password i just keep that file and as you can see the open core legacy petra is gone careful it just uninstalls open core legacy petra if you have installed open core to your efi boot partition or if you have applied root patches to your Mac OS because you needed Wi-Fi, graphic card drivers and so on, that is all still in place. It just removes the Open Core Legacy Patcher app from your Mac. Okay, so let's go back to the change log here. These are the main two parts that have changed for the Open Core Legacy Patcher 1.5.0 that you will notice as a user. One more thing, as Apple always say, that they changed when we go down here. Um, you can see increment binaries, they just updated the Open Core bootloader to version 1.0.0 because with the version 1.4.3, the previous Open Core Legacy Patcher version, there was still Open Core 0.99 included. Just for clarification, the Open Core Legacy Patcher is a software suite that installs the Open Core bootloader onto your Mac that is now updated to version 1.00 and that root patches your Mac OS to include drivers that are not included anymore in the new Mac OS to have your old Mac working and just a software suite that handles all that. Okay. So you could do that all manually, but it's way too complicated. And the open core legacy patcher has the advantage that it has the correct settings 
for each and every Mac model that it supports. So if we just go through the full change log, they, for instance, have implemented a pre-flight code signature check for the create install media. What is that? The create install media tool is a tool from Apple that is used here to create the USB macOS installer. Okay, they just start that tool that is included into any macOS installer to create a USB drive that you can boot from and then they add the open core and then they add the patches and everything. So some of you already um, noticed that when you create a USB drive, sometimes you try to boot off that USB drive and it says there's something corrupt, something not working, you cannot boot off that. That might happen if the download maybe was corrupt and so it creates a corrupt USB drive. And now they do some signature checks, they do some checks if the macOS installer is not corrupt before you create a USB drive. So now there's a question, should you update your unsupported Mac to open Core Legacy Patcher 1.5.0? And my answer to that is a little bit divided, okay? On the one hand, if your unsupported Mac is running fine, whichever macOS version you're using, I definitely don't recommend updating because there is no reason for that. Never change a running system. If it's fine, just keep it like that. If there is in the near future another macOS version, then you should definitely use the Open Core Legacy Patcher version 1.5.0 or whichever version will be appropriate. And therefore, stay calm. If there's a new macOS version, don't just jump the update. Wait. If you have subscribed my channel, there will be a video about that. And if you have joined the Discord community, there will be some info on the Discord server. If your macOS version is safe for your Mac and what Open Core Legacy Patcher you should use. On the other hand, if you have trouble updating your unsupported Mac, you cannot create the USB drive properly. Always when you do the root patching, it enters a boot loop and you need like a safe mode to get out of the boot loop and you cannot apply the root patches or whatever. You should definitely try version 1.5.0. Because there's one more thing also that I forgot to mention. Um, they also not even have the sanity checks for the USB drive installer if that is all a non-corrupt download. They also have some sanity checks implemented before applying root patches. And so the problem that you maybe apply a root patch to a system that has some trouble with its kernel and so the root patch just makes it worse so you cannot boot anymore, that should be maybe eliminated but at least be less troublesome than before because they check the macOS kernel before root patching and they will say, the patcher will say, okay, there's a problem with your macOS, I cannot apply the root patch. So if there's any problems with your unsupported Mac, maybe you give the new Open Core Legacy Patcher version 1.5.0 a try. If you're new to that, here is my easiest and ultimate macOS tutorial how to install it on unsupported Macs. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.